One of my favorite questions to ask is, are we alone in the universe? The idea that there might be advanced alien races somewhere out there in the cosmos has fascinated me ever since I was a child. And with so many stories of aliens and UFO sightings, you'd have to believe they can't all be fake, can they? Well, that's what we're going to attempt to answer. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Aliens and UFO Sightings Iceberg. This iceberg was made by Amilos260 on Reddit, so shout out to them. And also, fair warning, I do cut some of the entries out if I don't find them to be all that interesting. There's only so many times I can tell you about somebody who claimed to be abducted by aliens and then recounts the exact same alien abduction story that's been heard millions of times. But with all that out of the way, let's get into some of these stories and see if we can uncover the truth about alien life. Here is the Aliens and UFO Sightings Iceberg. The Roswell Incident This is the most famous example of a UFO sighting in American history. In June of 1947, it had been reported that the United States Air Force had recovered a crashed flying saucer in the area of Roswell, New Mexico. The report caused so much speculation that the story was actually retracted the next day. The Air Force would quickly work to cover up the incident, claiming that the crash came from a conventional weather balloon though that appeared to be just a cover story. This made conspiracy theorists and alien enthusiasts run wild with conspiracies as to what the true origin of the crashed flying disc was. The official story was that it was actually a recovered military balloon used in a top secret project, Project Mogul. The purpose of the balloon was to try and monitor Soviet nuclear tests, and the purpose of the cover-up was to not allow top secret Cold War intel to get leaked to the Soviets. Nevertheless, Conspiracies still ran wild with this event, eventually evolving into a story where not only did the Air Force recover an extraterrestrial flying saucer, but also the extraterrestrial bodies were actually recovered, studied, and experimented on, leading to the confirmation of alien life and a complete cover-up of the existence by the US government. While there isn't any substantial evidence for those claims, the Roswell incident still remains as the most famous incident of a UFO sighting. The Betty Anderson case. The Betty Anderson case, also known as the Anderson Affairs, is probably one of the most famous alien abduction stories. Her story begins on January 25, 1967, in a small town of Ashburnham, Massachusetts. That night, she claimed that her father, whom was in town visiting, became distracted by a glowing pink light outside of their house. After going to investigate, he claims that he saw several little creatures that he described as being Halloween-like. He didn't think anything of it, and the next day came with everything being seemingly normal. However, Betty began to have visions of otherworldly things. They would continue until 1977, where she would finally undergo hypnosis sessions in order to uncover the full story of what happened to her. And through these sessions, she uncovered the full story. She claimed that her and her entire family were put into a state of paralysis, where the aliens took them aboard their ship and conducted experiments on them including probes and the like. She also claimed that the aliens could communicate with her telepathically, and they informed her that they had come in peace to help humanity. In her accounts, she relates the aliens to God, whom hopes to have a relationship with humanity after they move past their self-destructive tendencies. She was then told that she would return home with no memory of what happened, and this story has sort of been the basis for most alien abduction stories that have followed it. The story is well documented, and several books have been written all about her accounts. Despite UFO investigators looking into the story, there hasn't been any substantial evidence outside of Betty Anderson's accounts. Still, it is a pretty cool story, and added a whole new element of how we look at aliens in pop culture. The Barney and Betty Hill Case The Barney and Betty Hill Case refers to an incident on September 19, 1961 in Lancaster, New Hampshire, in which a couple, Barney and Betty Hill, had spotted a UFO landing. After seeing a series of lights in the sky, Betty insisted that they follow them, and eventually, while traveling down US Route 3, they came upon a giant flying saucer that was silently hovering above them. They claimed that it couldn't have been any farther than 15 feet away from them. This caused Barney to stop his car in the middle of the road. They each got out of the car to investigate what the flying saucer was. Barney claims to have seen 8 to 11 humanoid creatures peering through the window of the aircraft. 
According to Barney's description, they were all wearing black outfits, including black hats. This is so interesting to me, as we always hear alien descriptions being about little gray men, but this is the first time I've heard them being described as humanoid or human-like. The aircraft stayed hovering above them for a little while before going back into the air, never to be seen again. Barney and Betty both immediately called the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon, or NICAP, to report what they had just seen. Once again, an investigation was conducted, and no conclusive evidence was found outside of each of their testimonies. The story did, however, become immensely popular and was adopted into the 1966 best-selling book, The Interrupted Journey, and the 1975 TV movie, The UFO Incident. The Kelly Hopkinsville Encounter The Kelly Hopkinsville Encounter is an event where a family was forced to defend their farm from what they described to be little goblin-looking alien creatures. They would defend their farm with guns, warding off the goblin creatures for hours before a few of the family members were finally able to make their way to a police station and report what was happening. This is one of the most highly documented alien encounters out there. After giving a report, four city police officers, five state troopers, three deputy sheriffs, and four military police officers drove down to the farmhouse to investigate. Damn, these guys were not messing around. Unfortunately, their investigation was inconclusive, and all they could deduce was that a shootout did in fact happen on the farm. Some skeptics of this story claim that members of the family were just drunk, though officers did confirm that nobody appeared to be intoxicated. Some believe that the little goblin alien creatures they were describing resemble that of local eagle owls in the area. However, the family claimed that the goblins were popping up and peering into their windows, in which, why would an owl do that? I don't know. It's kind of a weird story, and what's weirder is that neighbors would report that the family left town shortly after the event claiming that after the police had left, the creatures returned around 3.30 a.m. that night. Regardless of whether the story is true or not, it gained significant popularity and is even the inspiration behind the 1986 horror comedy, Critters. The Travis Walton Abduction The Travis Walton Abduction was an alleged alien abduction of, you guessed it, Travis Walton. He was a forestry worker who went missing on November 5th, 1975, while he was part of a logging crew in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest near Herber, Arizona. Walton was missing for five days and six hours, while many search parties were sent to try and find him. He would turn up again after calling his sister from a payphone, claiming that he had been abducted by aliens. The whole clearing was lit up with this weird glow. Uh, it's really hard to, uh, for any artist or movie to <laughs> try to duplicate the, the strange uh, uh, glow there was there. This incident is largely regarded as a hoax, even from the alien and UFO community. Reasons for this are that Walton was a known prankster who was also highly involved in the UFO alien abduction community. People also speculate that he was inspired to pull this stunt off after watching the UFO Incident TV movie in 1975, which was inspired by the Barney and Betty Hill case that we talked about earlier. Nordic Aliens Nordic Aliens is a term in ufology which refers to humanoid aliens from the Pleiades, I have no idea how it's pronounced, but it's this little cluster of stars in the sky. These aliens allegedly resemble Nordic Scandinavians, hence their name. They are six to seven feet tall with long blonde hair and blue eyes. George Adimski was the first person to claim contact with extraterrestrials that looked Scandinavian in the 1950s. And apparently other people have also claimed to have been in contact with similar looking aliens, including Travis Walton. This entry is honestly kind of lame. When I saw Nordic aliens, I thought it was going to be something so much cooler, like an ancient alien civilization or something, but no. Moving on. The Allagash Abduction The Allagash Abduction is another alien abduction story that happened in 1976 in Allagash, Maine, obviously. Four men, Chuck Rack, Charlie Foltz, and brothers Jack and Jim Wiener went up to that region on a camping trip where throughout the trip they experienced strange phenomena. A lot of these abduction stories seem to follow a similar pattern. The friends had memories of seeing a strange light following them throughout the night, but other than that wouldn't remember anything eventful from the trip, until years later in which they started to get strange visions. 
they would undergo hypnosis and uncover memories of an alien abduction. They each recalled memories of the four of them being taken into an alien aircraft, where extraterrestrial beings performed experiments on them. They would sell this story and spark massive popularity within the UFO community. It wasn't until 2016 that Charlie Rack came forward and claimed that the entire thing was a hoax, set up by the four of them to make money. Despite this, the other three men are sticking to their story, claiming that Charlie is lying due to a falling out that he had years ago with his friends. But yeah, if I were a betting man, I'd say Charlie is probably telling the truth. The Falkville Metal Man This is a good one. The Falkville Metal Man refers to an alien sighting in Falkville, Alabama in 1973. Police officer Jeff Greenhaw was responding to multiple sightings of a crashed flying saucer nearby. While searching the area, Greenhaw didn't find a spaceship, but instead, an alien spaceman in the woods. The figure was dressed head to toe in a metallic suit. He would grab a Polaroid camera and snap a few photos of this metal man. Shortly after, the metal man would run at a speed faster than anything Greenhaw had ever seen before. He tried to chase it down in his car, but to no avail. These are the images of the metal man that Greenhaw was able to capture prior to it running away. And yeah, I don't know. To me, it obviously looks like just a guy who wrapped himself in tinfoil. I mean, it's cool, I like the way it looks, but probably not an alien. It's worth noting, however, that Jeff Greenhaw may not have set up this hoax himself. The story actually ended up ruining his life, as his crazy story of seeing an alien would lead him to being terminated from the police department and having his marriage end shortly after. The Metal Man has gained a huge popularity and has been added to the list of interesting cryptids. The Domston Blobs Encounter The Domston Blobs Encounter refers to an attempted alien abduction in 1958 in the village of Domston, Sweden. Two co-workers, Stig Rydberg and Hans Gustafsson, claimed that they had to fight for their lives while fighting off three to four gray, shapeless, blob-like creatures. These creatures eventually became known as the Dumpston Blobs. Stig and Hans spotted a UFO in the sky that landed nearby and saw the blob creatures coming out of the craft. They then attempted to drag the two of them into the aircraft before they began fighting them off, throwing punches and trying to break free of their grip. After a struggle, the blobs were eventually scared off by a car horn. They would return to their aircraft and disappear. This story became a worldwide sensation and added yet another cryptid to be added to the long list of alien cryptids. What I love about this story is not only that the blob aliens apparently don't use advanced technology, instead choosing to just drag their victims with their limbless limbs, but that the description of these aliens as blobs is just kinda cute. I mean, you rarely hear this description of the aliens in alien abduction stories, so... It's one of my favorites, mainly for its uniqueness.